What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Bolero. Sam here with Gab and Maui. Hello, guys. Bolero. Yeah. Sando Gab is back, baby. Sando Gab is back. <laughs> it's been a while. Bolero merch. Bolero merch. By the way, speaking of Bolero merch, dun sa mga nag-comments, dun sa uh, previous episode natin, we are taking note of your comments. Don't worry. We will... We'll, Uh, work something out and let everyone know once we have something planned. Pero sa ngayon, wala pa. But we are taking notes of your comments and mga nagre-request. But today, we are going back to UAAP. Uh, we've been talking about the Gilas uh, team in the recent episodes. Pero marami na tayong player movement sa UAAP na hindi pa napag-uusapan. So we will cover each and every one of your UAAP teams. So all, most, if not all, of the UAAP teams pag-uusapan natin today starting with um one of the teams that are that's a constant contender has had a lot of player movement big and small recently so we are going to talk about the UP Fighting Maroons ngayon meron akong good news and bad news sa UP Fighting Maroons no so let's start with bad news bad news may isa na namang umalis someone a player that we've been talking about a lot player that The listeners have been talking about a lot. See si Gonzalez. So Gonzalez finally uh, announced that he is leaving UP to go back to Mapua, I think. No, so Gonzalez is leaving. But good news is, after Pablo left for La Sal, Gagate and Coronel, according to Nabin Ganglani, have recommitted or parang have strengthened their commitment to uh, to UP, and they will be playing for UP and staying in UP this season 87. So, let's get started with the UP fighting Maroons. Maroons, Gab, um, let, let me know your thoughts. Ano yung, dun sa tatlong yon? ano yung mabigat? What surprised you the most reactions to the, the three players that I talked about? Uh, I'm gonna tell you what did not surprise me the most. It was Cyril Gonzalez leaving. I call this. <laughs> yeah, you talked about him. Um, I think one or two games. Times. Yeah. Into the into the first round of season 86, yeah. I was already saying, Sayil Gonzalez is bound to leave. I mean, it, he's not getting any playing time, and Kayundale despite his ma, age, yeah, yeah. I, actually, you you come in the we we've been saying this and got a lot of pushback from UP fans, no, from our UP subscribers saying, nah, hey, he's not gonna this, leave. This he's, comments, he, he can, so... Oh, that young, he can develop in UP. Uh, he's gonna play in the second round. Uh, well, he didn't play at all. <laughs> And he, he got injured, I think, even through the second round into the playoffs. But still, even if he was healthy, he was barely getting any minutes. And despite his age, I think he's already 23 years old. I think... He'll have one year of residency before suiting up for M- Mapua again. I think this is his second stint already with Mapua. Uh, I think it was it's worth the risk for Sayil Gonzalez. I've been saying this since it's early season 86. Nasasayangan ako kay Sayil Gonzalez because unlike uh, other guys like si Hubilia and si Pablo who are unproven at the seniors level, Cyril Gonzalez is already a proven commodity for UP. Yeah. He was he was a rotation player in season 85. And I thought he was pretty damn good. I, I, I've been telling you guys, I mean, you, you put him on another team, I think he can start. I think he could put up numbers. I think he could develop into, into a star. I mean, he can defend, he can shoot, he can penetrate pretty well. Uh, he's just a bit undersized, but, you know, he's a big, uh, bulky guy. No, he does not give up a ton in terms of strength. I thought that UP had something in Cyril Gonzalez. I thought he was much better, actually, than Terence Forte uh, as a backup to JD Kagulangan in season 85. But, you know, he got buried. And for me, for, for UP, sayang. I, I, I really thought they had had something in Cyril. It just so happens that they had so many players. They had so many guards that, that they had to play. Uh, and obviously, Janjan Felicilda and, and 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 Raylan Torres were in favor for Coach Gold. I mean, very telling nung second round. Even if JD Kagulangan was out, 
they opted not to use Cyril Gonzalez as the backup point guard. And even Terence Fortea, they opted to go with Raylan Torres as the backup to Jan Jan Felicilda. Uh, that was shocking to me. I thought they would re- definitely lean into t- those two guys more with JD out. But uh, Coach Gold loves Raylan Torres and Jan Jan. That they that they opted to go that he opted to go with them as the point guards for the second round. And uh, I hope he gets. A uh, much needed boost in playing time in Mapua because he's obviously good enough. Uh, this could be a, a Robert Bollock situation. Um, I think he could pop off. I, I hope he pops off and I hope he gets uh, the much needed pro contract, that, that, that much needed exposure to get that pro contract because I think he's pretty good. Uh, in terms of UP, uh, again, just like Luis Pablo, this is not gonna matter. <laughs> I I think he played less than what ten minutes a game, just like Luis Pablo. So uh, it, it the bigger in in the bigger scheme of things for UP, uh, they're still a contender. Losing Cyril Gonzalez does not matter. They still have Felicilda. They still have Kagulangan, Alarcon, eh, Torres, and Remogat. all those other guards. Remogat is coming in. And, and, and Andrew Mogat is coming for season 88. So yeah, uh, it's not going to matter for UP. For the Gagate and Coronel news, I'm much more happy for UP that Coronel is going to play for them. Uh, I, I'm i with Maui Both on this you, one. I you think and Maui a, li- love him. Right? You and Maui love this. Guy. Yeah, I think he's a higher upside player than either G- Gagate or Gonzalez. And the fact that, they, that he committed, that he's going to play for his, in, t- in season 87, I think that's... That's a big win for UP. He's a tall wing. He's athletic. He's fast. He can shoot. Uh, I hope he does not get buried uh, because I, I I really do think that UP could use someone like him. Use a tall wing alongside their multitude of guards. While for Gagate, I think this is so stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry. What are you doing, man? Luis Pablo saw the light. Oh, why can't you? Uh, he saw you're buried in the depth chart. How are you gonna play with Alter and Stevens and whoever their foreign student athlete is gonna be? He's not gonna get any minutes. Uh, I, I I think you know he has an affinity to Coach Gold, which is why he's staying. But um, is it worth it, Seven, to ride the bench for a second straight season? Talaga. Yun, yun yung gusto mo? I, I, I really don't see this for, for Gagate and whoever is in his camp, I think should start nudging him a little saying, hey man, uh, it's not looking good for you in terms of getting rotation minutes in this UP team. You, I think you'd be better off someplace else, someplace else, whether it's in the NCAA or uh, another UAP team in, in need of a big man. And uh, ako, ako sayang. I, I think this is very short-sighted in terms of uh, Jung for 7 to stay in UP. I think he should have followed Lu- Luis Pablo and gone someplace else. Not La Salle, right? because, you know, it's very crowded there already. But some other school, man. I mean, you, 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 can, you can go anywhere uh, and get playing time. We'll, we'll talk about you in one of the schools later. UE lost a lot. Could probably go there and you know get a ton of playing time. So uh sayang ako for seven. I mean he's obviously talented. There are rumors that he's just he's slow to pick up the offense and the defense during practice. But still, man, uh two years riding the bench, is it worth it? For me not. Maui or Sam. Yeah, uh I think I have to agree with Gab on most of what he mentioned. Uh for me, one of the biggest surprises probably is yung si Sigagate deciding to stay. Uh, maybe he does have a, a strong bond with Coach Gold. We don't know. Uh, but uh, I've been seeing new training sessions ng UP players. Uh, I think medyo yun yung indication then if the UP players are going to stay or not going to stay. Uh, he's very much uh, active there and he's working on a ton of ball handling, three-point shot on his three-point game, uh, driving to the basket. So I think he's trying to convert to a power forward uh, player, not just a 
center solely. Uh, I think he flashed some of this uh, during his stint, during Gilas, yung versatility niya as a big man. Um, but uh, as Gab mentioned, uh, how can you get playing time when when Gary Stevens is coming? Uh, Sean Alter was also a rookie, much like him, but Alter was getting more minutes. Uh, so I don't know if if he is he looking forward to the challenge. Is is this a challenge for him? Is it what he's using for motivation to get better? But it doesn't look good uh, on the outside looking in during the off season. Uh, I understand completely why Pablo decided to to switch ships and go to Lasal. Uh, when Kevin Chambao leaves and when Mike Phillips graduates, then maybe there's a, a, a bigger path to minutes. Uh, my biggest concern with Gagati is if he decides to leave during his sophomore year, then that would mean that he would start get he would start to get meaningful minutes during his senior year. Na, whether it be the UAAP or the NCA, that's that's a very big concern. Uh, that's a good point. That's a good point. Diba? Uh, Imagine riding the bench for three years, uh, being one of the mo- one of the promising players from that under eighteen team. He was, I think, he was a starter for that team over Pablo. Uh, he was getting more minutes than Pablo. Uh, he did pretty well against uh, teams from the FIBA Asia under eighteen, and it's unfortunate that we see him just riding the bench. Uh, but maybe, maybe I'm just trying to be optimistic. Uh, maybe. He can learn a lot with that crowded back court, uh, front court. Maybe he can get better and prove us wrong. Maybe he can snag minutes from from Alter and Danny Stevens. But even so, how many minutes are we talking about, Deva? So it's gonna be a hard, hard season eighty seven for for Gagate. I think even harder than getting minutes during season eighty six. Uh, as far as the others, uh, si Shiley Gonzalez, we've been saying this a ton. Uh, I think yung, yung, yung real question right now is, is this the end of the exodus of players of, from UP? Uh, this is the fourth player that they expected to be in the lineup for season 87, counting Bahay in. Uh, will there be more players? Uh, I think yung rumors with Coronel and Gagate started also because of this, because of this mass exodus. Um but uh, as far as Coronel, uh, I've been hearing around uh, from different people, uh, even yung, yung the ones in the know, uh, in the UP community, in the basketball community, that Coronel has been very impressive. Uh, even during nung, during the season when, when he was rehabbing and he started training with the team. So with Cancino graduating, then maybe he can get some minutes. Uh, maybe if Alarcon continues to be inconsistent, uh, maybe he can prove us wrong and and get a ton of minutes. Uh, but as, as we've mentioned, UP has a ton of players coming in. UP has a ton of players already in, especially as a backcourt. So we'll see how Coronel gets his minutes. Uh, but I'm hoping that this guy bounces back. Uh, he's coming off from an ACL injury. Hopefully, he, he still has that uh, burst. Uh, I like this guy similar to Abadam from Lasal. And I think si Abadam naman, just a side comment, si Abadam is breaking out sa Pinoy Liga. Uh, if some of our LaSalle fans, I'm sure, have watched yung games nila. He hit uh, a crazy buzzer-beating three against NU, I think, in one of the tournaments sa provinces. And he's been consistently being one of the top scorers. Uh, I'm hoping that Coronel, uh, if he doesn't pan out during his first season, maybe maybe during his second se- season. But unlike unlike Nagati, kasi he has, a, he, has, he has a ton of ano pa eh time to do things. The Magagate is going on his second year of eligibility and Coronel is just a rookie. So we'll see, Sam. Just to add, no, before you go, Sam, uh, yeah, Gagate can transition to power forward, but there's also Lopez, Torculas, and Belmonte playing power forward. <laughs> so, <true>. Where <laughs> is he going to get playing time? His only hope to Maui's point, his only hope is to outplay all those six players and get meaningful playing time. And to outplay six players, the odds are stacked against him. So, yeah, that's all I have to say, man. There, there's just no minutes available for him. Sorry. Yeah, nothing against Gagate, no? Yung sinasabi natin is really sobrang stacked and heavy ng lineup ng UP. And very talented din talaga. Gagate individually is also very talented, but because 
napaka-deep ng lineup ng UP. He it's very difficult to crack the rotation, especially since as you mentioned, a lot of the players from the previous season that were part of the rotation are still coming back this coming season and they are getting talented players to join the team then this coming season. Case in point si uh, Gani Stevens was um, been dominating also in the preseason games ng UP the, the past year. So, yun yung concern natin. No? And I think maganda yung point ni Maui because um, if he decides to stay this season 87 and leaves the following season, that would be like, which means sa third year niya, kalangan niya mag mag red shirt muna or mag skip ng year wherever he goes whether UAAP or NCAA that means for Tamakamawi fourth year na siya or senior na siya once he actually gets to play for that new team so I guess it made sense for Pablo to leave um, but for UP I think really despite yung news about uh, Gonzalez I think yung good news dito is si Coronel because as Maui mentioned this is the player that a lot of people are talking about ngayong off season even nung nung when they got recruited Maui i think ikaw you were saying watch out for this guy diba um among the three guys that were recruited uh he's he's sort of the underrated guy na um you thought could really impact or help the team immediately so i think this is a, someone that um the up fans should be uh, excited for and it's it's really great na this early palang they get the commitment of Gagate and Coronel specifically. Uh, and to Gab's point, uh, really Gonzalez leaving, it's better for Gonzalez. Uh, doesn't really impact UP that much since Gonzalez barely played uh, last season. But speaking of a player leaving uh, that had impact in his team last season. Let's move on to the next team. I, I want to talk about uh, the FEU Tamaraos. Uh, they did not make the Final Four again. was not a good season for them again. Except they beat Ateneo twice. So, yun, okay yun. Stop bringing that up, Sam. Stop <laughs> bringing that <laughs> up. <laughs> That's the only positive, eh, diba? <laughs> diba? From their season 86 campaign. Yes. yes. That's so, true, though. That's true, though. Um, Miserable season for FEU, we have to admit, kahit yung mga FEU listeners natin, medyo nalulungkot. And bad news for FEU fans, Patrick Sleet is leaving FEU and is joining um his former coach, Coach Olsen Resena in the NCAA. So uh, let's start with you, Maui. Anong, anong reaction mo when... Nung nalaman mo na Sleet was leaving FEU and not just that, but he's joining Coach Olsen Nasella in the NCAA. Yeah, uh, I think you also failed to mention, di ba si Competente also deciding to leave FEU. Ah, yes, uh, yes, yes. Sorry, sorry. I think that's a very big blow to a program that has struggled. Uh, we're losing three key players. Basically, si Gonzalez, si Torres, and now si Sleet. So we're looking at Bautista having a Ray Remoga type of season. Uh, he's going to have the ball in his hands. He's going to get to jack up probably 20 shots a game next season. Uh, I don't know if he's going to pan out like Remoga. Maybe he was very good at in spurts during season 86. But this is a big blow to FEU. Uh, this is a program that much like USD, we want contending in the UAAP just because of their history. Uh Ever since I've been watching the UAAP since the early 2000s, FEU has always been a staple team, uh, part of the Final Four team, probably has the most champions aside from Ateneo since I started watching in La Salle. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, I'm hoping that maybe si Naveen kasi, when I, when I guessed on, on this show, he said that FEU might get Sean Chambers and the backing of the Alaska group. I'm hoping this pans out because if it doesn't, then maybe we're looking at the dark ages of FEU continuing. Uh, it's actually pretty scary because we haven't heard any news about the graduating players from FEU also. The white juniors, they, they, they are very promising players. Uh, the Gab is, uh, lo- loves a lot, of, a lot of those players from the juniors division, especially I think si Pasaol. I think he's the gem uh, from all of them. He could have a similar impact as RJ Barrientos did probably when, on, during his rookie season. It's concerning, no? We, we, we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, 
the only good thing about the FEU program is actually their juniors program is still continuing to perform uh, good. Uh, but the seniors team, it doesn't look good. Uh, it's going to be a very hard battle for Coach Denok Miranda in his second season. I think even worse than, than, his, uh, than his dilemma in season 86. Uh, he will have to have practically a new lineup. Uh, I think si Gab would be happy that they, they will have a new FSA. I think they should have a new FSA. Uh, I don't know if they will have an FSA, <laughs> but definitely any FSA would be a, an upgrade from the, uh, from their FSAs during the previous seasons. Um, but this is a big blow uh, to FEU. Uh, definitely, if I would be making one of the losers during the offseason, uh, FEU probably would be part of that top of the list right now from all the eight teams. Uh, we don't know. Maybe they surprise us, but as of right now, it's not looking optimistic for season eighty-seven. Gab. Actually, ako very different ang reaction ko kay Maui. Ako actually to me, this is good news because I think the clean slate, start of a new era, young guys, you're going in there. Uh, I think Pasaol has already committed. VJ Pre has, has, has already committed. Yeah committed to to FEU uh, uh, along with Kirby Moncopa and Jedrick Daa. So, this is a start of a new era. And I, I as much as I love Patrick's lead and what he brought as a slasher, uh, I think it the guys coming in are much better than Patrick's lead. Uh, the problem with Patrick's lead for the past few seasons is that he couldn't shoot. So when he, when he was on the court with the likes of... Uh, Gonzalez, Cyrus Torres, and uh, all other players, he was the guy that people were leaving because, you know, he, he doesn't shoot it well from the outside. So, uh, I think this is, honestly, you, my reaction was, uh, this is out with the old, in with the new for, for FEU. I think from the, from the previous version of this FEU team, I think only Cholo Anonuevo, it's a and see and see Jorik Bautista are are the only ones left. Uh, I don't know. There, there may there may be some bench players there that are still uh there on the FEU side, but all in all, it's gonna be a very new team for FEU. And I I like where it's going. I I like that they're leaning into the young guys. Uh, again, Pasaol, DJ Pre, Moncopa, and Daa. And when he graduates, finally, after next season, see Dwayne Miranda. I think they're going to carry. I, I really think they're really good. And this is all hands on deck on the youth movement. Now, for the FSA, we'll see. I have, I have not seen their FSA yet. Hopefully, they get someone at least you know, no can to go, but rebound. Uh, the no way to go. No way to go. But uh, uh, <laughs> from Mo Fati, I just get someone who can rebound and get a layup to go <laughs> just, just get someone capable of doing that I, I think would be a step up for for feu but yeah youth movement it is for for feu so i mean okay so for me uh you guys mentioned some maui mentioned some of the players that uh left feu torres sleep uh competente i think i think what for me, what hurt the most was Patrick Sleep leaving for um, uh, the NCAA. And and the only reason why is because si Patrick Sleep galing din sa FEU high school program. No? Si Cyrus Torres and Competente are actually Gila's youth players, but I don't think either of them can, came from the FEU. Alam ko si Competente parang US ata. Yeah. But uh, to Gab's point, what's exciting about FEU is um, yung coming in young players nila no sina gap listed sina BJ Pre um Pasaol etc uh i think it was Maui who mentioned na FEU is really doing like a grassroots program where they're really developing or focusing on their high school team and when we were watching uh the high school games Maui you pointed this out and i noticed this also see Montinola the owner of FEU was there watching the game that's how invested they were in uh, the UAAP junior scheme, diba? So I think it's very important to see na everyone's committed sa FEU team from high school to college. So uh, I think Gab 
to your point in terms of like the actual production on the court um hindi din naman super big yung mawawala with Patrick Sleet leaving just because a lot of talented players are coming in i think what hurts lang is the optics of it kasi for me it's a high school player from FEU that they they produced uh leaving FEU um in the middle of his college career no so yun lang yun yung actually more what hurts for me with Patrick Sleet leaving because i i sort of want to pick, paint a picture to these young guys na hey High school guys, they always commit to FEU. Loyal yan. So at least, Maui, you mentioned, si Bautista hopefully will will sort of lead the way for the young guys. Kasi Jorik Bautista also came from the FEU high school program. So that's sort of what I'm hoping to see. Jorik Bautista leading all of these like high, really talented young guys um, into the next phase or the future of FEU college basketball. Um by the way, FEU High School, we talked about this FEU High School player then si Remogat. Um, I'm sure FEU <laughs> wishes na sa, they had kept him. Kept. Ang, yes, ang, correct. Rumors. Yun ang balibalita. Uh, so I, I think they wish they would have kept him. Um, speaking of Competente uh, and Gilas players, I think si Competente is moving to another UAAP team. So he's going to the UST Growling Tigers along with si a fellow Gilas player si Mahmoud tama ba ano yung first name Zayn si Mahmoud Zayn Mahmoud Zayn Mahmoud Okay so eto na naman tayo we're going to talk about the UST Growling Tigers we're going to get hype because they're going to get um, Maloloko na naman tayo ng UST hindi <laughs> na <laughs> hindi na tayo maloloko kasi may proven na eh di ba Oh, hey. oh, hey. Uh, <laughs> na yan. In port and ski, na those are proven yeah. commodities. Okay, sige, tingnan natin. So, um, are the additions of these guys along with the players that will be joining season 87 finally going to push UST to the next level? Gab, ano, ano sa tingin mo? I think, yeah, I. Ako, this is a smart move for Zayn Mahmood because he's going into a team that does not have any bigs. I mean, yeah. Who would have known that would have been a good move? Hello, Seven Gagate. Uh, he's six foot seven. UST was playing a six foot four center in, in Christian Manaitai. And Eko Laure, who was, uh, I think he's only six foot three or six foot four himself. So. Obviously, there's a hole that, that 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 needs to be filled. Now there are other players coming in next season who are also big. I think Peter Osang and Chase Lane are some names who are gonna play big for them. Uh, not to, I've been watching the Pinoy Liga where you where UST is playing. So very different from last season where we we did not see UST at all in preseason tournaments. Now they're playing as early as now in preseason okay. tournaments. Yeah, Clearly, the strategy did not work. <laughs> yeah. Clearly, <laughs> the strategy did not work. So, you, you, USD has a lot of players coming in. Uh, Jeremy Robinson looks like he can be a player. Um, Ice Danting, I think, who formerly committed to Ateneo yung last season, is now in USD with Fortsky, with Kyle Paranada. Um, and, you know, I, see, I just mentioned sila Peter Osang and Chase Lane. So, they have a lot of promising talent coming in. And you, know, you asked to Maui's point, proven commodities. First, Kip Padrigao, a mythical five-member. Uh, Kyle Paranala scored a bunch in season 85 for, for UE. So Nick, Nick Cabanero has a, lo- a lot of help, help coming finally. for him. I, finally, <laughs> has a lot of help Sana coming for him. And, I, and I'm, ex- yeah. and I'm excited for Zayn. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, I'm excited for Zayn Mahmood. Uh, I think he can get rotation minutes. Bilang, there's a lack of big men in UST. I, I'm actually worried for this. Is who I'm worried for is SJ Moore, because since a lot of wings are coming in and and guards, where is SJ? more gonna factor in. I mean, we were talking about them all of last season and how we were hyped up for him and you were disappointed that 
they weren't playing him. Mukhang next season, they're not going to play him. He's going to have a lot of competition for minutes. So, and also in this preseason tournament, he's also not getting a ton of minutes compared to the newer guys. So, this is a bit worrying for me for guys like SJ Moore and Mark Lemmett. Uh, these are guys who are highly touted recruits who did not get a, a, a lot of minutes last season. Um, hopefully, they do. But, you know, USD is a bunch of people coming in. And uh, si Competente, we'll see. You know, he, he, didn't, he, he didn't impress me that much in season 86. Played limited minutes and, you know, hit a couple of threes in some games. But, you know, he wasn't really a factor. We'll see, you know. He can shoot. So... We'll see what he can bring. But si Mahmoud, I'm excited about. Uh, there was an interview, I think, with Nav with Naveen Ganglani where he mentioned that he wanted to go to Ateneo. So I was a bit surprised that he was going to USD. But, yung, but I'm happy for him. He's going to get playing time right away. And he's he's, he's going to show you what he's made of. He's six foot seven, So there's obviously a spot for him. Maui, Sam, go. Yeah. Uh, malay mo, Gab. Parang si SG Moore, biglang di laruin, di ba? <laughs> We're hyping him all the all off season long, Ooh. and then he doesn't get minutes. Uh, I hope that's not the case. Uh, I think that's one of the main reasons. I agree with Gab. I, I think that's one of the main reasons why Zayn Mahmoud decided to go to UST. Uh, getting that minutes, they got getting that exposure right off the bat is probably one of the main reasons why he decided to go to UST. Despite uh, saying before that Ateneo ang choice destination niya, uh, I think that. Much like, uh, I think that there's nowhere to go but up. Diba? This is something that we've been saying, unfortunately, for UST the past few of seasons. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> seasons na yun, yun yung mantra yeah, natin para sa UST. Yun seasons na. I mean, but, but they've been doubling up. Diba? They've been doubling up. They've been uh, racking up more wins. Uh, but joking aside, <laughs> Joking aside, I think this is the season that they should contend <laughs> for the final four. Final four is not. Diba? Joking aside, I think this is that season that they have to contend. Uh, if they don't contend, uh, I think Pedro Rencho will will be transitioned to a role similar to Bo Perasol, probably. Uh, this is the season that they have to prove. Uh, I think they had they have had two of seasons to recruit. They have had. Uh, a myriad of ty- talent going to them finally. Uh, this is a time. Uh, I think in, SMC is not a group you mess with, uh, as proven by the PBA. They know how to hoard talent. They know how to use talent. Uh, if Pido Horencio does not deliver, then he will. they will get another coach, in my opinion. Uh, but uh, I'm excited. Uh, as, I've, as we've been saying sa podcast na to, from day one, uh, UST is one of the best fans in uh, the UAAP. Uh, yung cheer ng UST is the best, by far the best, in my opinion. Despite me not even have, having any connection uh, to S- UST, uh, I would have to say that the craziest crowd I've been on, uh, I've sat on, kasi I've been sitting, I have had the privilege of being able to unfortunately seat, seat uh, sat uh, on, on the other teams, uh, the opponents of Ateneo. Yung sitting sitting there, um, I would have to see that USD was one of the craziest crowd that I've been in. Uh, and I'm excited. We're going to see Go State, hopefully them racking up more than four wins. Uh, I would say anything less than six wins would be would be a disaster for USD this season. This Sportsky wow. Padrigao, Kyle Paranada, and Nika Banero will be breaking their jerseys. If they don't get to five or six wins this season, I think they have to do it. Uh, this is the time. Uh, all the other teams, uh, I think I've been saying this to all my friends. All the other UAAP teams, all the other UAAP schools have been uh, to a T uh, damaged or are less less stronger than last the previous season. Diba? All the teams have lost key players. All the teams have had mm-hmm. some players who have been transferring to different schools. USC is, I think, intact. Uh, they have Nick Cabanero. Now they have two two marquee guards coming. Uh, hopefully they get that good FSA. Not an FSA that would quit after one game. I think that's also a very important uh, part of the process. Which is why I no think they have... Nowhere to go but up then for USA. Yeah, nowhere FSA. to go but up. I think they have multiple, ano, multiple options 
for the FSA slot, I think that's the, that's the main reason why they have multiple options because of what happened last season. So yeah, uh, I'm optimistic for UST. Maybe I'm crazy for the second straight off season, but I'm hoping kasi that UST will be a contending team always. So, um, maraming, as you mentioned, maraming star players na papasok din sa UST. That's why you're confident, diba? But just like, I think just like if you, it's always important to have uh, young guys coming in then that you can sort of develop for the future, diba? Hindi naman puro, pw- pwedeng puro veterans ka na baka in one or two years mawala lahat yan. Um, it's important to have that good balance. And I think having these two guys, young guys come in is going to be helpful for the UST program along with the other young guys that they recruited last year. Hopefully, sina SJ Moore also uh, pick up their uh, their game this coming season. Um, I I think, by the way, I think these two guys are former Gila's youth players and they played with each other diba, in Gila's youth. So, meron ding, baka ano to, hatak, diba? I don't know kung sino humatak kanino. Yung may tampering yan involved. Oh, <laughs> Shout out to Mason Amos, who also oh. tampered. <laughs> and and yeah, I was gonna say that, de ba? Ganun talaga talaga. Eh. Ganun. Like let's say for UP, you have like the NU kids, de ba? The NU boys, talagang nagsama-sama sila. Even the LSGH trio initially, tatlo sila pumunta sa UP. Ateneo, you have the Gilas kids also joining Ateneo there, and then now and the Cebu kids. Dito naman sa F sa UST meron ding Gilas youth players na sumasali. So, it's always like that, no? So, okay din siya because um if you start getting like these types of players, others will also come in. So, this is just a first step for UST. I think um it's a good first step. Uh as for what we I can expect from UST the upcoming season, but uh, I I'm not sure. I don't want to um, I don't want to get too excited, but I think long term, Maui mentioned, as long as it's being managed or handled by SNC, um, you're in good hands, basically. Right? You're in good hands. Uh, they joined the NCAA, handled Letran, and ting naman naman ilang championships yung uh, nakuha nila sa NCAA. Uh, sige, let's, let's move on to um, another team na. We are so excited about has been doing well the past two seasons, pero they just can't catch a break right now. So I'm talking about the U- UE Red Warriors who just lost, you know, Ray Remo got their best player who initially committed to them at the end of the season, moves to UP, and now we hear five five players leaving U- UE all at the same time. So, I'll just go through the names. Tulabot, Manalang, Langit, Alcantara, Maglupay, all leaving the UE Red Warriors to join different teams. I, I, uh, I won't get into the details. What does this say about the UE program? <laughs> what we can expect for you in the upcoming season. I, I want to hear from Maui first because we've talked about UE the past few seasons and this always happens. A key player or a, a certain number of players will end up leaving UE earlier than expected. Pero I think I've never seen anything like this na limang players leave the the Sabay team sabay. all at the same time. <laughs> diba? Sabay-sabay. I'm not sure. FEU, the FEU players, when Coach Olsen Rasela left, there were rumors na gagawin nila yun, But it never really happened. Um, but ito, UE, though they're not superstars, pero they're still, you know, players from the previous season na sabay-sabay umalis. Maui. Rot- rotation players. Some of They're them. rotation players. They're yeah. Some of them. Uh, so Maui, how do you process this? Is this the first time na nakakita ng ganitong situation? No, because you've seen it in the past sa UE, di ba? It's crazy. Uh, maybe maybe before it wasn't at all at the same time, but yung ngayon kasi medyo shocker because it's five players. But the names that were mentioned, mm-hmm. the, the names before were actually bigger names than the names that were mentioned on the five. Uh, 
you gotta ask um, what's happening inside UE, uh, what's happening inside their program. Uh, I think vindicated yung past players who have been saying that there have been something, something crazy or something, something bad uh, is happening inside internally. Uh, I think I sent to you guys si Rimogat even posted sa face sa Twitter account, Twitter story, uh, Instagram stories niya. Uh, a cryptic message uh, that looks like it's being thrown at UE. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, every off season we say that UE is on the rise, but this off season I would say that they are definitely. I would say if unless they find another Remogat, unless they unless Momoway turns into Ben Embala for season eighty seven, I would. I don't think that they will contend. For uh for the final four uh I'm not even sure if Momoe will still be there come season eighty seven, diba? It's only March. We're oh, only talking boy, about March. Ang ang ba? Ba? We have, we have ang ang a lot of ang months ang to go. Um, and there have been rumblings of of Momoe going to a maroon school and a green school. So it's it looks like that there's a bidding war between probably La Salle and UP. Uh. There are rumors that uh, Momoe is even residing na in Taft Avenue. Uh, to our Lasal followers, please confirm. To our Lasal subscribers, is this Maalit true? Tayo sila eh, di ba? Maalit Why is this true? These rumors. Um, <laughs> Nakita so, niyo ba siya sa top? <laughs> Stalker pictures. Baka nasa, do- nasa ano na eh, di ba? Baka nasa dorm na ng Taft. Kasama na pala nila, ano, kasama na pala nila baklaan. And uh, Cortez, who are also transferring to Lasal for season eighty-eight. Um, but it's crazy. Uh, last off season, they have they had Remogat and uh, Momoe, which made us believe that maybe the next three or four years they were going to be contenders. Uh, I think what they showed us this season that, that was that they had a ceiling of potentially becoming a, a dynasty. Uh, that duo, but now they could potentially lose both. They have lost. Uh, I would say their best player, uh, Rimogat, for the past few years. Uh, if it's nowhere to go but up for other teams, it's nowhere to go but down for UE after this news. Uh, I don't know if other recruits will still opt to go to UE after this. They probably have to fix their image, uh, their program's image. And uh, unfortunately for Coach Jack, despite all the success on the court, uh, I think we have been very, you know, very vocal about Coach Jack's performance on the court, how he has outperformed the past few seasons. It just doesn't paint a good picture what's happening in UE. And uh, you being the coach is not a good picture. So it's a bit unfortunate. Gab? Sayang lang, uh, Maui, no, yung, yung trending down nila. Kasi... The vibes of the season was very, very positive. The star players were coming to watch. Na Paul Lee, na no, no, na na excited na sila sa UE team na to. A lot of fans were actually watching this UE team. They all, they almost made it again, de ba, to the final four an, an, until hanggang sa. Day. I watched that UE team. <laughs> Gab, exactly. Oh, yeah, no, 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 Last two seasons, ito ang biggest, oh. isa sa mga biggest fans yeah. ng UE na oh. UE support. UE alumni. Ang saya manood eh. <laughs> Sobrang yeah. modern basketball. Isa kaya talaga. So, so, so anyway, uh, ako talaga yung biggest thing ko dito and, my, and the most worrying thing for me is that these guys are leaving but they're not stars at hindi sila bangko. Diba? Usually ganun eh. Na uh, other stars go to other teams you know, because they get pirated. Or if kung bangku ka, you want to go to another team because you want to get more playing time. As I said, when we started, uh, these are rotation players. Uh, Tulabot was getting heavy minutes. MJ Langit was getting heavy minutes. Especially when Gerard Wilson uh, injured his shoulder. So why are they leaving? Uh, there's obviously something wrong. This this has gone on for three se- three straight seasons, three straight off seasons. UE is losing players every single season, and not not unlike no season eighty five when players graduated, wow. Now players are just leaving on their own volition. 
uh, there's something really wrong. Uh, I don't know if it's Coach Jackson Chago or there's something wrong with the athletics program, with the basketball program in UE, but it's just not a good look. They're going into season 87 again with a brand new team. <laughs> a brand new team all over again. Uh, I think si Coach Jackson Chago is going to find stop gap solutions again, going to recruit some one and dones, but I don't know, man. This is just not, not this is not the way to go. Uh, they have to build something, and currently they're just building something for one season, and then people leave. So there's obviously a problem. And oh, if there are any journalists out there who do this for a living, please find out what's happening in UE so we can talk about it and we can finally know, right? It's such a mystery. Why are all these players leaving? Um, I'm so sad, but. Knowing Coach Jackson Sargo, I'm sure they're going to be exciting again next season. And we're going to fall into that trap. I'm going to, ooh, there's something. Yeah, you is doing something. They're on the rise. They're going to contend. There's a new Rimogat for next season. Maybe there's a new Rimogat. Actually, in the pre-season power rankings, tayo, Gab, you, you rated UE really high, right? You only rated UE really high, right? Because you're a bit of a bit of a bit of a Because the only Rimogat, right? Unproven. Oh, yeah, so you would Pero, know, Gab. You would know better. Go yeah, uh, just, to, just to add lang, Gab, on your comments about if there's a journalist, uh, I'd like to throw out uh, a rumor from before. Uh, during the time of Paul Lee, actually, UE was ang rumors within around the UEAPs that they were selling players to other teams. So parang, that was the time during Lawrence Chongchon, Lawrence Chongchon's stint. He was just getting the recruit, uh, milking them, and then selling them to other teams. So is this that? Or is there really an internal internal problem? So maybe we'll find out within the next few yeah, months. But Maui, it's starting. The guys who left are, are, are not even... Talented or good enough to, to <laughs> who would buy them? <laughs> if, if you say if what you're saying is actually co coming into yeah. fruition, who would good, good buy point, good Manala? Point. He didn't even play. <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah, this it's, is a bad. It's crazy. This is, this is, we, so we really don't know what's happening. Uh, I hope they fix it. Uh, Sayang, because UE is UE has, a lot of great history in basketball. Especially if you were a fan of the UEAP since the 2000s, diba? I think UE also has one of the most UEAP championships. But but other, on the other hand... Uh, they have the you, most. They have the most. They have the most. Even if you were a fan uh, during the 2000s, which we three are, there are a ton of UE, U, UE alumni na talagang you cannot not talk about when you talk about Philippine basketball, diba? James Yap, Paul Artadi, uh, Tubid... And the likes, Polly, but it's crazy that what's happening right now to the program. Uh, it's not like FEU that at least the juniors program nila is harping in the right direction. Uh, and it looks like that they may, they might have a plan. You is just in shambles, in my opinion. Uh, it's funny you mentioned yung ano. By the way, sorry, just. just. Ano, si Lawrence Johnson diba, passed away a few years ago. So, God bless his soul. Um, he was also an agent rest of... In peace, rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace, Lawrence Johnson. I think he was also the agent of Paul Lee, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so, big-time coach and agent Lawrence Johnson. Um, you mentioned some of the former star players of UE, Maui. Uh, is it time for them to bring in some of their former star players to sort of build that uh, championship uh, competitive culture. Maraming, maraming tayong mga former players ngayon na medyo ano, um, libre na. Like si James, well, si James Liak pala nag-blackwater muna for one they year. They do have former players though. Hindi lang mga lasalista lang. <laughs> oh, lasalista natin na Don Arihado, no? So, so to be si, fair, uh, and like, so yung UE culture, di ba? UE culture. So, Maybe it's Ronald time. Tubid, di ba? He's a general manager Don't ngayon it. for Terra Firma, I think. Yeah. Terra Maybe Firma. he can do something to the UE program. Okay, so from one coach to another, let's... This one, for this team, hindi naman siya player recruit, player news, but it is a new member of the coaching staff. So, uh, Ateneo hiring coach Louis Alas. 
uh, as part of Coach Tam Baldwin's uh, staff. Um, so that's the big news, no? Yun yung confirmed. Pero let's take a step back because prior to this announcement, a few, uh, maybe a week or a few days prior to this announcement, may lumabas na medyo viral, um, I think, Instagram stories or post or whatever from his son, Kiefer Alas, with a photo of the Jesu. Diba? Screening shot ng mga tao yung photo ng Jesu. And people were wondering, is this Kiefer Alas saying na he's moving to Ateneo for his senior high school year? Although wala namang sinabi si Kiefer Alas or comment, we find out a few days or a few weeks later na si Coach Louis Alas, his father, is joining the Ateneo coaching staff. So, my question to you guys is, well, before, you can also talk about Louis Alas being part of the Ateneo coaching staff, but is this a coincidence na si Kiro Alas posted the Jesu Coach Louis Alas now joins um, the Ateneo coaching staff? Is this coincidence? Or... Nothing is a coincidence, Samuel Santos. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is Sige a ka. coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, the announcement got me hyped. Of course, um, Kevin Alas played under his dad in the NCAA, won a championship. Maybe Kiefer Alas would want to do something similar, play under his dad. And I also think this is insurance, just, just in case Tab Baldwin decides to choose another career path. I mean, he's been an Ateneo coach for such a long time, he's been very successful. I won't be shocked if another uh, country program basketball club would want Tab Baldwin as their head coach. I mean, he's he's a basketball genius in my opinion. In in my opinion, I think other programs would love to have him. You know, there, you, there, you, there was a rumor this past offseason that I- Indonesia was looking at him. So I think this is insurance for Coach Tab. I mean, Coach Duelas is a champion coach as coaching the PBA. Before, um, he has the uh, reputation. So, I think that that's, insur- that's insurance for the Ateneo program. As for <laughs> reading the subtle hints <laughs> there, at- what Ateneo is doing, <laughs> tayo, eh. tayo, eh. I mean, subtle pa ba? Subtle pa ba <laughs> Oh, it is not, it's, not su- it's not subtle at all. But, hindi daw to to lang, guys. Sabi Coach Louis. Oh, he, 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 that's what they all say. That's what they all say. But you know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's hope. Anyway, the reason why we're so hyped because Kiefer Alas is just that damn good. Just look at his numbers from this past season. He was in grade 10. Grade and 10. And he was doing this. Grade 10, yeah. Grade 10, yeah. And he was doing this in the UAP level. In the UAB juniors left as a grade 10 student. He still has two more years of high school left. So, and he was yeah, the I mean, he's the next youth star. Oh, when yep, he team was. They start under six. Saka proven. Proven ang alas na guard, diba? Na guard. Na Sorry, to yes. Juju so, alas. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, uh, I love having another head coach there. I, 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 he's a previous champion coach, but the... The bigger news is, what does this mean for Kiefer Alas? <laughs> because he's the re- he's the one we're all looking out for. I mean, he he's the big name in the high school division r- right now in the UAP. Yeah. So after, after the bahay, you know, no? the bahay, the Go bahay, ahead, like, Simon, ma. Kiefer Alas. Mo, sorry, oh, ma- masingit lang ako mawa kasi I just have a few points. To Gab's point, uh, baka nga hindi siya package deal, di ba? Pero kasi gusto natin maging sustainable, di ba? Ayaw natin yung um, masyado pa silang maraming isipin na travel time, ibang kotse pa sila. So, since si Coach Louis Alas pupunta ng Ateneo, isabay na niya si Kiefer, the drop-off niya sa high school. Sakto, diretso na siya Moro. Kasi dun sa mga Ateneans, by the way, yung high school is right beside Moro Lorenzo Gym where the Ateneo team ay assume practice. Pumaga rin naman ay titray ng Ateneo, di ba? Sabi ni Mason. Yeah, titray ba? Exactly. So, let's save on gas, save on carbon emissions. Isabay mo na para save the earth tayo. That's what we're only concerned about the environment, di ba? Not, nothing about 
um basketball but kidding aside uh gab uh, the, i just wanted to add two connections no dun sa kinukuwento mo kanina um si Kevin Alas is by the way married to Selena Dagdag a very popular courtside reporter of Ateneo so um, nothing is a coincidence somewhere and next is si Alas diba and next is si Alas Selena Selena Dagdag should be whispering to uh, her ano brother-in-law si Kiefer Alas eh hey, Ateneo ganyan so baka nabubulungan din si Kiefer and second Strategic also for Ateneo to hire Coach Louis Alas. You mentioned he could be um, insurance in case Coach Tab leaves. But Coach Louis Alas also has history with Topex Robinson from La Salle. They, were, they worked together in Phoenix sa PBA. Coach Louis Alas was the coach. And then when he left, si Topex took over. So they're very close as far as I know. So... um. Maybe a strategic move by Ateneo to sort of get into the mind of Coach Topex Robinson from his mentor, Coach um, Louis Alas. So, Maui, anything you want to add? So, for me, I thought that was very interesting, the angle of it. Yeah, Why si Coach yeah, Louis Alas? Go, Maui. Yeah, actually, actually uh, si Louis Alas was actually one of the, the contenders, I, I would say, dark horse contenders to be coach of Ateneo. After Bo Perasol was fired, uh, I think if you check on Google during 2015 before Coach Tab was hired, uh, Olsen Nasella, Louis Alas, and I think si Coach Norman uh, are some of the names that were floated during that time. Uh, it's just crazy that eight years after he finally becomes an assistant coach for for Coach Tab's Ateneo. Uh, I agree, this could be uh, a way of trying to protect yung ano yung continuity ng program uh, maybe Ateneo is starting to prepare for life without coach Tab Baldwin uh, hiring a coach such as Louis Alas as an assistant especially at the college level is like hiring Gwen Capasho uh, i think si Gwen Capasho has served a ton of championship teams both as a coach and assistant coach, coach. Galoy uh, Garcia also Maui and coach Galoy uh, Garcia uh, i think their insurance uh, or they they just have enough knowledge to provide uh, any team. Uh, but uh, as far as Kiefer Alas, uh, ako, I, I would be happy if he goes to Ateneo, but I would be happier if he went abroad, uh, to be honest. Uh, I That's think true. that he can have a similar path, uh, similar to Andy Hemaho. Uh, Kiefer Alas is too good for high school basketball. And he's only, he, as you guys mentioned, he was only a rookie, a sophomore, uh, only on the sec second year in high school, only grade 10. So he still has two more years before college. Uh, I don't know if it, it will indeed materialize. We'll know probably in a year or two uh, if he does indeed decide to stay and play for Ateneo. But um, my hope is, uh, much like to any prospect, any prospects na, na talented and uh, has that opportunity, my hope is he gets to, to train abroad. Uh, I think that despite Kai Soto not being able to probably transition getting to the NBA this early, it's still positive in my opinion. Uh, you see players like uh, Andy Maho, uh, Kobe Paras deciding to do to go this path. I think it would be beneficial to Kiefer Alas to be able to train and to be able to, to go up against uh, tougher competition at this point. Uh, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't, I cannot say that I would be happy. Diba? If he goes to Ateneo, sempre it's it's I'm from Ateneo. But my my real hope is hopefully he doesn't play UAAP. Hopefully he gets an opportunity abroad, whether it be an opportunity similar to LeBron Lopez or to LeBron Francis Lopez or an opportunity similar to to, to the likes of Andy Hamaho. It's just the the route. I think it's that's the best path if he intends to to potentially play abroad after the after after his playing career here in the Philippines. So hopefully, that's my hope. So, take us home. Yeah, and, and to be fair, Maui, I think yun naman yung medyo lumalabas dun sa balita, di ba? When he, um, right as soon as the UAAP junior season ended, there were rumors na na uh, Kiefer Alas was considering going abroad. So, yun naman ang narinig din natin. So, 
And that's a good point. No? It's really the exposure and the training. For someone as talented as Keeper Alas, it's really better for him to go abroad. Uh, so that's what we're hoping for. And we wish him all the best. Um, but uh, I think at the end of the day, getting Coach Louis Alas is a good pickup for Ateneo. Um, it's still good news, though it's not a player. I think it will definitely be a positive. He will definitely have a positive impact for Ateneo. This coming season. Uh, I think in terms of player movement, that's about it. So the two schools that we did not talk about uh, today is Adamson and Lasal. And I think para sa mga Lasal fans out there, no player movement can also mean very good news. Lalo na kapag sinusundan mo si Kevin Kambao on his social media accounts, very, very confusing cryptic posts from Ke- Kevin Kambao. Minsan parang Seems positive. Minsan parang, oo, oh, 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 uh, alis na ata siya. Nakakal, nakakaloka yung mga pinopost ni Kevin Kambo. And we have friends na naloloko dun sa mga posts ni KQ. So, so far, no no tweets, no player movement from Lasal. That's good news for you guys. And by the way, we didn't me- we never really talked about him, but Janelle Policarpio joining, we did mention it. He went back to Lasal. So, I think that's good news for Lasal, definitely. Um, for Adamson fans, don't worry. You have a bunch of high school stars uh, graduating. Let's try to get their commitment. Yun ang inaabangan natin, ba? I don't think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, meron any announcements of the high school stars committing yet. So that's what we're waiting for. And, and I think Gab mentioned this in the previous episodes. We actually hope they would stay with Adamson uh, so that Adamson can also be competitive in the UAE because that's what we want. Right? We want players to be competitive para we can have like a very exciting UAB season. Just like parity. Last we want parity. parity. Yon. So it's not that we're hating on any of the teams, but we want parity. We want um all the teams to be competitive and it's just more fun that way. Anything you want to say before we go, Gab and Maui? Nothing. Yeah. And we hope Wala. for more news. Oh, yes. We hope for more news. And to our listeners out there, kung meron kayong mga balibalita or naririnig, just comment them down below kung ano man naririnig nyo sa schools nyo. Uh, maybe we can talk more about it in the next episodes. If you enjoyed this video, please like uh, and subscribe. Share with your friends. Uh, we'll continue to make more UAAP and Gilas basketball content uh, every week. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification icon. That's it for today. Sam here, Gab, Maui. Goodbye.